for many, many years now, we have been fed a certain narrative about a certain subject that I have discussed before. The ancient monsters that we call dinosaurs. Now when it comes to fossils like this, people throughout history have been digging up ancient remains of creatures without even knowing what they've dug up. Even right now, most people would have to go look up the skeleton of their favorite animal to identify it. But do you guys know the story of how we started to identify dinosaur fossils? The first bones written about actually were not thought to be that of an animal. Most people start with William Buckland in 1824, a professor of geology at Oxford University. After he examined bones of what he thought to be some type of animal, he concluded that they were from some extinct carnivorous lizard. He named it Megalosaurus, even before the term dinosaur was invented. But see, Buckland didn't find those bones. Someone else did, back in 1677. A man by the name of Robert Plott, a man who was convinced that the bones in question were the bones of a giant human. Now even though Buckland was a professor of geology at Oxford, Robert Plott was no idiot. In fact, he was the first professor of chemistry at Oxford University as well. He was also the first keeper of the Ashmolean Museum at the university. He was known to be an alchemist as well, studying the science that CERN studies, you see. So it wasn't like he didn't know what he was talking about. He even did extensive research into giants due to his discovery of the bones, one being what he believed to be a giant human femur or thigh bone. I just want to briefly talk about something that came to mind. So let's take a closer look at paleontology, which is more of a cult than a science, so that we can gain a better understanding of reality versus the concept of a monster. So, do you guys know how they are able to reconstruct the remains of dinosaurs to give us an idea of what they look like? They guess. For example, when they first identified the T-Rex, they only found pieces of it. So they didn't really know what it was. So they started taking those bones and matching them up to other animal bones. Mind you, they didn't have any arms or legs for this skeleton for some reason. So after matching up bones they did have, they found that they closely resembled the bones of a chicken. And from there, they just drew in the missing bones to make what they think the creature may have looked like according to the chicken. Over the years, of course, they dug up more T-Rex specimens. Now each specimen is going to have a different set of bones. So after finding about 46 T-Rex fossils, they just took all those bones and put them all together to form the T-Rex skeleton we see today. Even though they are not sure that all the bones are from the exact same species of dinosaur, if they found a skeleton that was missing a limb on one side, they would simply copy and flip it to complete the other side. Now folks, does this sound scientific or artistic? Want to know something interesting? They did at one time find an intact, complete fossil of a dinosaur. This was back in 1858, reported by Richard Owen, the same person who coined the term or invented the name dinosaur. This is called the Skeletosaurus. This is an English dinosaur found at Charmouth in Dorset, England. And let me just put it to you this way. The most complete dinosaur fossil we have doesn't really look like a dinosaur, but more like a dragon. This is the skull. Do you see the 
horns protruding out the back of the skull. The entire body is covered in bony armor. What's funny is some artists' renditions depict this creature with two prominent bones sticking out the back, where wings are usually depicted in dragon renditions. You know, not all dragons fly or breathe fire anyway. So how is this thing any different than what is described in mythology? I'm not trying to be funny here. We have multiple stories of dragons that are much older than the discovery and study of dinosaurs. So why has science decided to separate the two? How is this not the same creature? I tell you why. Because they would have to change their story. Because in mythology, these creatures existed alongside men, but in our current version, they existed millions of years ago. So which is it? Let me tell you something about paleontology. Most scientists, actually, they don't like to rewrite science. It's too much work. Instead, they tend to pick up where someone else left off. Think about it. The concept of the dinosaur has changed very little since the study of dinosaurs began. Yet you have constant edits to certain species and the discovery of more species than anyone can keep up with. Understand, there is no supreme dino expert that goes around to verify if what they find is in fact a dinosaur. That is why many, if not the majority, turn out not to be dinosaur fossils. You know, when they found that intact fossil, they were forced to change certain ideas about dinosaurs after that. And see, that is what I mean. They are not going to change any of these theories until they have no choice. And that is because the evidence becomes too well known. Richard Owen's description of the specimen he studied of the Scaladiosaurus, many details of that description are missing. It's almost like he was writing a really good description and then suddenly lost interest in the specimen and just stopped giving details about it. I want to show you guys something that comes out of the University of Cambridge. I just want you to listen to this for a moment. 162 years ago, some fossilized bones were collected from the shore beneath Black Ven at Charmouth in West Dorset. They were sent to Richard Owen at the British Museum in London, who was at the time the acknowledged expert on fossils in Britain, among many other achievements. He had invented the word dinosaur. These bones clearly belonged to a dinosaur, but were a jumble of the remains of several different animals. Owen encouraged the finder, James Harrison, to look for more specimens in order to clarify matters. Within a year, Harrison had recovered a near-complete skeleton of one animal. Until that moment, dinosaurs had only been known from teeth and a few scattered bones. So their structure and appearance had been entirely speculative. Such rarity had led to the extraordinary and largely incorrect concrete models of dinosaurs built in 1853 and 1854 that can be seen today at Crystal Palace Park in London. The world had its first dinosaur skeleton and it was in the hands of the man who had invented the word. Now, you can go read the rest of that article. It's very interesting. You know, they recently discovered another specimen with its skin preserved, the notosaur. So, two of the most well-preserved or intact dinosaur specimens both look like armored dragons. You can call them whatever you like. The one thing that creationists and evolutionists agree on is that these monsters existed and now there are people who believe that they never existed paleontology is filled with fraud so much so listen you ever wonder why they know so much about dinosaurs from fossils well that's because they don't they guess if you were to go and audit all the pieces of the evidence on dinosaurs you would find more fabrications than actual remains. There was an interesting article published. Paleontology is rife with fraud, experts conclude. Experts at the Stanford Research Institute for Educational Advancement 
have released a report with a controversial conclusion about paleontology. After an exhaustive study of nearly 200 years of fossil evidence, they have determined that vertebrate paleontology, or more specifically, the study of dinosaurs, is rife with fraud. According to the report, the large portion of the fossils examined by the team are from extinct animals, but not from dinosaurs. Some are from animals that died within the last 50,000 years, according to the team. And the report contained even more embarrassing information. Some of the fossils were actually made of petrified wood, clay, plaster, or plastic. The majority of dinosaur skeletons in museums today consist of a mixture of some or all of these fraudulent pieces, according to the research conducted by the experts. Paleontology is not only a poor science, it is littered with deliberate fraud and fakes. You know, a lot of those bones they find of ancient humans, most of them turned out to be animals or just people with diseases. Some of these fossils are reconstructed when they only find the teeth. I'm not making this up. They will actually take something like a piece of a jawbone that belonged to an orangutan and then build an entirely different creature around it. Keep in mind, when they first started doing this with dinosaurs, they were putting the wrong heads on the bodies, that they had to switch it up later, then rename the dinosaur. For some reason, people think scientists somehow have this magic ability to reconstruct an entire creature starting with nothing but a tooth. They're not that smart, folks. This isn't the fifth element. Their they're quantum computers aren't even that smart. The Piltdown Man, the Heidelberg Man, the Nebraska Man, all frauds created in this manner. And this is exactly what they do with dinosaurs all the time. So what did they do? Did they just say, well, we have bits and pieces of dragons and we have bits and pieces of giants Let's just mix them up and call them dinosaurs, and we'll tell them that they're millions of years old, so its nature remains outside of our comprehension. And even with our technology, it still does. A lot of that has to do with radiation, but that is a whole other discussion. There is much more to come, folks. Stay tuned. Check out the presentations I have done for this subject, and check out Mud Fossil University's channel as Roger has some great information on fossil theory. Until then, we can piece together the information we have so far. Everyone stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.